So today we're here in Vicenza, Italy, which is in the northeastern part of Italy. And we're dressed like Americans, we're in Italy, but we're going to a French market. So we're gonna see how that works out. But right now we're in this beautiful park and it's All like Paris, seen, but cleaner. It is way cleaner than Paris, that's for sure. And we've seen rabbits everywhere. I don't know if this is like a feature of the park or we just came on a lucky day, but there are just like 30 or 40 rabbits just running around. So we'll try to show you some of those shots right now, but it looks so beautiful here. Even though we only live about an hour away from the city, we have never been here, so this is a first for us exploring Vicenza. The architecture alone blew us away. We just spent the better 20 minutes trying to find an ATM. Four ATMs that exist on Google Maps, but they don't, or they're closed off. Uh, so here, you, they expect you to have cash, but... Have no ATMs, so keep that in mind when you're traveling. weird seeing the French flag in Italy, I will say. We can't even find French wine here, just so you know. Like, you go to any one of the Italian wine stores and there's no French wine anywhere, so uh, this is kind of strange. The market was located in the beautiful Piazza dei Signori. They had everything from scarves, snacks, crepes, sausages, and some more. We were very excited to explore and see what we can find. All right, so this is uh, some kind of an apple pastry. I think it's called Chausson au Pomme. I just know pomme means apple, so. Let's go ahead and see. Make sure there's no bee inside. Mm. <laughs> it's not hot, but it tastes very, very fresh. Just so much apple pastries inside of there. Ooh, wow. It's very sticky and flaky on the outside, so delicious. I feel like I could eat 10 of these. So I think I got the most American thing that a French person in Italy can make, which is a baguette with a bunch of cheese and a hot dog. I'll put the name uh, on the bottom what this is. It just came out of the oven. It's still really, really hot. Let's see, let's see how this tastes. Mm -hmm. I think the uh, sausage is probably German. I think this is the most international food I've ever eaten. It's really good, very hot. <laughs> I was looking for this, some good French wine. So we're gonna leave here with what? Some wine, some cheese? Yeah, but you can't show the Italians that you're buying Italian, uh, French wine though because they'll probably arrest you. I think I found what you were smelling. I don't know what it is, but it's not much. Oh, it's tea. It's tea, but go down more. You can start smelling all these spices probably about 10 to 15 meters away. This mixed with the tea store next door and on the other side of them they had a soap shop. This was the best place to stay. As we were walking around the market there was one particular smell that caught us off guard and it was this cheese. We've never had a sandwich like this before and the line for it was huge so it seems like it was definitely worth it. They are made to order and everything is super fresh. They also scrape the hot cheese right in front of you. Would you try this type of sandwich or have you ever had it before? We were standing in line for this sandwich. Uh, it looks delicious. It probably tastes delicious, uh, but the smell is a little off and it's probably the cheese. I said to Mariana that it kind of smelled like dirty laundry a little bit, but then again, that's cheese. Cheese can stink from time to time, so it still kind of smells like it. It's very oniony. There's a lot of onions in here. Oh yeah, I added like dried up uh, onions mm -hmm. sprinkled over the top. But it's got prosciutto and this kind of French cheese. I don't know what that's called. Very crispy. There's a lot of little crispy onions inside here. And the, the prosciutto is really warm and soft. The whole thing is very, very hot, actually. Very delicious. So I've actually never in my life had that cheese. We know where you melt it off the top. So this is my, oh, look how, look how cheesy and melty it is. Oh my God. So I've never had this cheese. Let's eat it before it solidifies. This will go well, so well, with like a good tomato soup. Mm. 10 out of 10. I wish they would have had a French bartender or a vendor there. They gave out wine, but we settled for some spritz instead. 
Now it's time for some pastries. This is what the French are known for, besides the cheese, of course, but the pastries, that's what I've been waiting for, and hopefully you have as well. Well, I'm waiting for the cheese for home. Cheese and wine, that's what I love about the French. Wine, yes. <laughs> the wine's still good. They had so many unique foods and samples for everything that we had to try pretty much everything. I know what, I, what flavor I'm gonna get. What are you thinking? Uh, I'm gonna get the same thing, but I'm gonna get real chocolate and not butter, like white chocolate like you're getting. How so. dare you? How... Comment down below your favorite type of chocolate. <laughs> So this has been a really good first day in Vincenza so far. We only live about an hour and a half away from here, so I can't believe it took us this long to visit this city. But this is what I love about Italy. This is a town most Americans probably never even heard of. And if you look around, this place has more beautiful buildings, honestly, than Tuscany. And there are no tourists, maybe some like Italians or Germans, but this town is phenomenal. But let's try this French pastry in Italy. It's very light. It smells really good. Oh, wow. There's a marshmallow. And that doggo wants some. <laughs> it's so, so good. Mm. This will go really, really well with some hot chocolate. All right, so I went with the chocolate with coconut shavings on it. And I was wondering why there were bees over there. And that's actually because if you look on the bottom of this little waffle type thing, there's honey. There's like honey all over this thing. So. It's so soft. Oh my God. Right? Yeah, I can't tell if that's cream or marshmallow, but either way, it's amazing. Mm. Very, very sweet. Honestly, I don't think you can have too many of these before you start to feel sick, but this one is absolutely amazing. Wouldn't it be great with hot chocolate? Oh yeah. Oh. I think this has to be the most unique. Cool, so the lady had a bunch of different flavors of the macaroons, and I decided, just to be funny, I wanted to go with three different alcoholic ones. Cognac, um, mojito, and... Champagne. Champagne, this one was champagne, this one was mojito, so I wanna try the, the cognac one first. Crumbly? Wow. It kinda does taste like <laughs> it has cognac in it, oh my god. They're so delicate, I just see them crumbling, let me see. Oh my god. Yeah, right? It's mm. really good. Should I go on to the next one? Okay, next one. This is the champagne. So, of course, being French and getting macaroons, you gotta get champagne ones as well. <laughs> I like these because they're not overly sweet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you get a macaroon and it just hits you with the sugar. These are very mild. They're extremely delicate, but they're also... This one's very soft in flavor. I don't know if I taste the champagne, but it's still really good either way. There's like this um, caramelized sugar that's crusted on top. It's mm. really, really good. Give me some, damn. Damn. <laughs> all right. Mm. Last one before I fall asleep from all this sugar. Mojito. Oh my God. Very green, this one. Does it smell like mojitos? They don't really have much of a smell, but maybe that's a good thing. I don't know if macaroons are supposed to smell like anything. Some angry dogs over there watching you. <laughs> Whoa. This one tastes like a mojito. Mmm. Like, it is very green. Oh my god. Doesn't it? That is all mint. Wow. It's like the mint. Yeah, that's what it is. It's the mint from the mojito. So it's very good. refreshing though after really? the other one. Yeah. Mm. All right, so last stop on our all right, so last stop on our sugar binge, we've got the Eclair. Chocolate. The classic French. Let's see. I feel like I've been hyping this up the last hour, so I'm have high expectations. It's very heavy, very, very soft. So if you can see it, I'm just gently holding it and it's just melting in my arms. It doesn't smell like anything. Mm. It's lightly chilled on the inside. The dough is very delicate. The chocolate isn't too rich. So sometimes when you, I think you go to a bad bakery, the chocolate's kind of like that fake sugar and it's very sweet. This is like the perfect balance because the top chocolate it's very delicate, very creamy, and the inside is just the perfect chill temperature. So... Hey, save some for me. So we have one more thing left to get at this market. Do you know what that is? Let's go get it. The best part is left for last. 
Now it's time to try some sausages and all the cheeses that the French brought with them, some of which were a bit questionable. So he said this is just for the color. Mm. French cheese is just so good. So we can't leave, of course, without getting some wine. Tonight's dinner is going to be very good. With the goods secured, it was time to head home and try everything we got. So the French tasting doesn't end at the market. We brought some stuff home and as you can tell by Vernon's face, he looks uh, very excited. Suspicious is a better word than excited, but um, excited nonetheless. So when we were driving home, I think he said the funniest thing this year probably. So Vicenza is about like a good hour's drive from where we live. We had to open the windows because one of the cheeses was so stiff. It smelled so bad that I thought that one of us had farted in the car. Um, obviously, if there's only two people, that leaves only one other person. I thought it was her, but it, honestly, it was the cheese, so yeah. This is a good excuse to blame it on the cheese. And the thing is, is after bringing it home, it still stinks. It stinks up the whole kitchen. Uh, tell what happened this morning when you were making coffee? I got a whiff of the cheese. I guess I thought something went bad in the fridge, so... Um, thankfully, no. we're good. No, he said this morning, like, I opened the fridge and it almost passed out because of the smell. Yeah, it's it's still pretty bad. I don't know if it's getting worse or like... It's the been, thing, like two days. The thing about cheese like this is that you don't know if it's actually going bad or if this is just how the cheese smells, you know. As an American, I'm not really used to cheeses like that, um, so... But I don't think the Italians really have stinky cheese like this. No. Uh, and this is part, the guy said this is like a mild one, so yeah. it gets much stinkier. In yeah. France. So instead of just stinking up your fridge or the kitchen, it'll stink up your whole house. So. But let's try it. Yeah, I mean, it looks good. Our cat was very, very interested in it. All right, let's work our way from right to left. I was going to start with the wine. Sure, the wine. So this is a Bordeaux. Ooh. When's the last time we had French wine? It's been a while because it's it's pretty much impossible to get that kind of wine here in Italy. Uh, you can only get it at markets like the one that we were just at. Um, or specialty stores. It's very smooth. Try it. I already did. So it already smells like socks. Let's see. The French are going to hate us after this video. Oh yeah. Very it's smooth. Good. Very smooth and very smoky. So. I wouldn't say it's, it's not as good as like a good Chianti or Fosco, but if you know wine. Yeah, it's good. I mean, we're not wine snobs. Um, we like wine, but we're not critics or anything like that. So it's good. Not yet. Moving on, we're going to work our way from here and go that way. All so right. first up, this uh, orange cheese. So we asked the guy at the market why the cheese was orange. And I think he just told us that it was just like added food coloring, which if you don't know that cheddar cheese in America, that orange cheese, it's not orange for any biological reason. It's just colored that way so that it gives it sort of a distinct look. So that's kind of what this cheese is here. Um, so yeah. Mm, tastes so much better though. Mm. It's very dry. Yeah, very dry. It's like- Very chalky almost. Kind of like Parmigiano Reggiano. But I think it's, the aftertaste is almost a little sweeter mm -hmm. than par Parmigiano. But overall, I think eight out of 10. This one is really good. I really hope that this is not the stinky one. It's not no. the stinky one because I would love to get this one again, so. I think when we saw it at the market, it just looked like a giant cut open dodgeball. That's what I, it remembered me, reminds me of. Or like even like a melon. Mm. Because the color is just so orange. Yeah, it looked exactly like a cantaloupe. Here you go. I, I cut very generous pieces, as you can tell. It doesn't smell that bad right now. It smells different when you get up close to it. Maybe this isn't the stinky one. No, this is the stinky one. It's Because strange. the other one was packaged up, the other one's a brie. Maybe it's so bad and it's so sharp that when I get close to it, like it, my my brain thinks it's something else to prevent me from passing out. You I don't know, know what I wonder? I wonder if the skin is the stinky. Maybe. Because I cut off the, the brine, the brine, the, whatever it's called in English. The brine? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I think that might be the stinky, stinky stuff. Hmm. Hmm. I never knew a cheese could like pinch your tongue. No, it's you, very you sharp. Could, it's like it pinches like the individual's little little pieces of your tongue. For me, it's the sides of my tongue. Mm. I can feel it like running across the sides. It's not bad though. I wouldn't say it's anywhere near the orange cheese, but it's not bad. 
It's very creamy too, because it's still pretty solid, but yeah. like when you put it in your mouth and like your body temperature like melts in your mouth. It's very nice. I think something like this would probably go well with something, um, probably the salami mm -hmm. or something very meaty. Maybe even the frog raw. I'll make, Wait, sure, not bad. I'll make sure to brush my teeth and use mouthwash after that because I, I can't take any chances. I don't want to go out in the public and people think it's me and it's the cheap. The Italians will know. Yeah. The, the, You're eating the French stuff. They're nosy. They'll know. Ooh, it melted. Oh, God. That I hate is... this kind of cheese. <laughs> we put the animals outside so they're not trying to steal our stuff. Oh, this was the stinky one. No, this is just brie. This one smells horrible. It's, it's, you know what it smells like? It smells like the farm, like the dairy farm. It smells like a sewer farm. Yeah, this one, this has got to be the stinky one. This is definitely the sneaky one. It's so... I just think it smells like the farm. It's stinky, but like... What do you think the farm's gonna smell like flowers? Yeah, like at the farm when you go into the cows where the cows are indoors and it smells like whatever cows are putting out, that's kind of what this cheese smells like. But hey, look, if you're a cheese snob, this, this is probably like an amazing cheese and I'm just crapping all over it. Sorry about that, but that's the truth. Nah, I'm good. Nope, sorry. I think this is the stinkiest cheese I've ever had in my life. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Oh God, my fingers smell bad now. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the stinkiest I hope, cheese. I think we should have eaten that one last. I hope everything we eat from that one isn't gonna smell like that, so. It's yeah. not terrible. The, the texture, the texture is really good, but it's just so strong. Like I think a, with this cheese a little bit goes a long way. Yeah, I'd rather eat Kraft Singles over that, sorry. But no thanks. All right. It's unique. Now we're on to the best part. All right, so I think that one is the cognac salami. Okay. Ooh. Tastes like luxury pepperonis. Very good. I like the salami is not too dry. Sometimes mm -hmm. you get it, it's just like, ugh. Gets in your teeth, but this is just perfect. Mm. Wash it down with some more. There's just no, there's no such thing as one. I think you gotta eat, there's like Pringles, right? You don't just eat one Pringle. You don't just eat one of these French salamis, you gotta have all of them. So good. I think we had, in Italy, we had four salamis, so it was pretty good. Mm -hmm. Let's see how the French compare. It's definitely Ooh. more fatty, if you look at yeah, the, uh, yeah. the inside compared to the other one. There's yeah. more pieces of fat. A little bit tougher, too. Mm. Which is weird, because there's more fat, but... Mm. More like... Um, Gamey, I guess you could mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. people use the word gamey, I guess I can see what they mean. Like gamey, I think whenever somebody says that a meat is gamey, basically what they mean is it doesn't taste like chicken or beef and I can't nail it down, so it's gotta be game. Everything's chicken. Mm. This is the most unique looking one. This one's covered in herbs. Yeah. Wow. Wow. This yeah, this is smells really nice. Kind of smells like Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. I feel like that's what they smell like. <laughs> Mmm. So I'm not sure if you're supposed to remove that or not. Because I tried to remove it and you really couldn't, so I assumed you have to eat it with it. Mm. Either way, it's good. It's like a salami Christmas. Oh yeah. I wish we would have got this in December. <laughs> Man. Mm. Wow, that's really but good. But this one's a little tougher. It's not as soft as the first cognac one. It's like jerky. It's like chewing on yeah. like a jerky. It's drier. Mm-hmm. So, mmm. Mm. The fat from the salami is like melted onto my fingers. So what do you want to go with first? Cognac elk pate mm -hmm. on some Italian bread? Or do you want to go with frog gras? Just so you know, a lot of these sound very expensive and they probably would be if you tried to buy this kind of stuff at a, in the US. You'd probably have to go to a Whole Foods or some really expensive grocery store. But at that market, it really wasn't that bad. And it was still an upcharge because it's cheaper in France, but you know, they have to bring it over here. Sure. So when you look at these things, you're probably looking at these thinking, wow, that, you know, the name itself or whatever, Luigi. whatever it is, it sounds very, very expensive. And you know, when you're in Europe and you're in France or you're buying this from a French market, it's not anywhere near um, expensive. Like for example, in America, peanut butter is cheap. But in Italy, peanut butter is ridiculously expensive. Yeah, I think so, we showed it to them before. Like it was like a tiny little jar and it was like seven euro, which is like almost eight dollars. Yeah. So in Europe, pate is cheaper than peanut butter. So that's... Probably healthier too. 
yeah. Probably healthier too. Yeah. So that gives you an idea about uh, the differences in prices here. Sorry. Let's try this. Mm. Wow. There's like so many flavors going on. Wow. I don't taste the cone yet. Mm -mm. But I taste uh, it tastes very lean, like very, very healthy. It's very delicate. Mm -hmm. There's not. What would, I mean, I would com compare this to like a good, good stewed beef. I mean, I guess that's the closest if you never had elk. But it, it tastes a little bit kind of like how the uh, boar salami was gamey. That's how I think this tastes a bit. Hmm. It's like a gamier beef. I'm trying to think of... There's no smell. Yeah, there's not really much of a smell. I, I'm not really sure how you would describe something like this. I think that there are these kinds of meat spreads that you'll find in the US. I'm not exactly sure the names of them, but it, this is the closest that you can get to that. But the taste is just completely unique. All right, next we have the uh, frog gras. I think, was it the first time you had it? Like, was it two months ago? Yeah. Was that the first time? And to be honest with you, I didn't like it. I didn't like the foie gras. It's, it's just liver. It did not taste like anything. Maybe it's a really, really fine taste and, you know, growing up eating Lunchables and, and, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, I don't have the kind of palate for that sort of thing. But when I, when I tried it before, it just did not have much of a flavor. It was just all texture. So we'll see if this one's any different. Which one do you want? The smaller one. I'm going to go with this one. <laughs> well, we still have a whole jar. It smells. A little like cat food, not gonna Our lie. cat was trying to climb up the counter and I opened the can. So sad. He probably thought this was for him. He thought, oh man, an early dinner. A little fancy for him. I think the can of this was 23, Ooh. 24 wow. euro. Mm, this one's better. Mm. Yeah, the, not... That liver taste though, Ooh, that like hits you. It definitely comes in. This one's a lot creamier than the one that we had before. Um, it's nice. So being the only second time that I've ever had this before, it's not terrible. Um, I'm not sure what the hype is about frog gras because to me, there's still not a whole lot of taste involved. Not, not really. At least not to me, but uh, for those of you out there who like foie gras, please let us know in the comment section why you like it because I'm just really curious. I feel like it's something a lot like caviar. Yeah, you know? I think it's like an acquired taste. Yeah. I mean, there's certain things that I eat uh, that he hates, like pickled herring. Mm -hmm. When we went to Poland, we had a pickled herring tasting. And Amsterdam. Oh, yeah, in, Amster in Amsterdam, you get to eat the whole thing, just like a seagull. It's great. I love Amsterdam. Well, hopefully you enjoyed today's uh, tasty video and we made you hungry. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if we get to go to any other markets like this again, uh, which they're not very common, at least where we live, but We'll definitely go ahead and try to get some more food from other places, maybe Austria or Germany or Switzerland. But there will be Christmas markets coming in, what, two, three weeks? So stay subscribed for that because we definitely will be going to Christmas markets. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. Yeah, so we're going to get out of here and I got to light a candle because this place stinks.